we're live back again hi everybody uh mini son of monster palooza i am here with tamra carlson woodard in Hello. dawn diningr Hello. <laughs> both of these ladies i've been working with for i'm going to say a very long time but we're all extremely like 20 long years 26 oh. years for we all Wait, something something happened okay. are we back on did we lose any of that or <laughs> okay so everybody heard okay so it, it, Tamara Tamara Carlson Woodard Don Dininger but yeah I mean so we all started about 12 years old yes <laughs> and that makes us all about what 33 32 yeah. years old uh, yes so but I met you on your very first job yes you were the first person I ever worked with exactly well, and then I met my husband the on next what day. show what show Carnosaur 2 which I heard you mention <laughs> earlier <laughs> Carnosaur 2 a John Carnosaur B. Show. Yep. yeah <laughs> Yeah, and then I've known. I met you at Steve's. Yes. I think on Bicentennial, Bicentennial Man. Bicentennial Man. There we go. I just so. don't remember what our first show together was. I think I met you on AI. It was Jurassic Park three. Yeah, you were doing AI, AI and Jurassic Park at the same time. Yeah. yeah. The rest Jurassic is history. Park, Bicentennial Man, all small films. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny little teeny, ones. teeny little films, but no, we've been working. And so we're all fabrication people. We're all cutting and sewing and things like that and obviously you guys are fabricators as well what what are cutting they and sewing cutting <laughs> cutting cutting ouch sewing oh was it your band-aids on your fingers yes yeah, so who did i tell earlier before it was Gar gordon that was here about silamide we we're oh. talking about like different things that you learn you know as like, yeah i remember the big spools of thread we would get and just we pulled off like that much uh, and we would cut it and like that. And, and all the whole of a sudden, thing would unravel. Yeah, I met in the shop and it's like, that's amazing thread. So, <laughs> but so I'll, I'll start with Don. So, like I said, we've known each other. I mean, my daughter who's over here, but she was a wee baby when we first I met. I know. I know. It makes you feel not old at all. It's all fun. She's a little stroller. Exactly. <laughs> but, it's uh, like two. So, where were you? I met you at Steve's on Best Man. Yes. Where were you before that? That was, well, was that the only job? job I had done before that, that wasn't a low-budget film, was um, a commercial at the character shop. It was a Coors Light commercial, and I was only there for three days. And then my next job was at Steve's. And the character shop is, that's Rick Lazzarini, right? Yes. Rick Lazzarini. So, to those who don't know. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's a whole there's an audience out there. <laughs> Hi, people. No, so you were at you were at Rick's. So then you went right from Rick's to Steve's. Well, not right. Oh. Like I think I had moved to town. I worked as a waitress for three months. Got that job for three days. Then I think I waitressed another couple of months, and then I got the job with Steve because okay. uh, Christian Tinsley recommended me. At least you got work. I was telling Mike Deke I was eating peanut butter and crackers and just <laughs> waiting for somebody to call me. <laughs> I was listening to that in the car, and I almost got a little the clip for you. I, you know, and that's, I, I'll, I'll let everybody know, too, when I was telling that story when I was with Deke about John Bullish, who ran Optic Nerve. John mm -hmm. passed away several years ago. Oh, yeah. And that is one of my greatest memories of John, uh, um, John Bullish, mm -hmm. is, you know, just kind of pulling my butt out of the fire and <laughs> keeping me in Los Angeles, so. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, what... what what brought you guys to LA? I mean, are you you're not LA people, right, right? But I knew this is what I wanted to do since I was like 15 years old. Right. So we're all cut from the same cloth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We are. It's just like so. What was it? Was there a film? Was there a, a um, TV show or something? No, I was. Um, I went to school in Georgia. One of my friends I ate lunch with all the time happened to be an extra in the Friday the 13th part six that was shooting there. <laughs> and so one of the special makeup effects artists came to talk to her class and he also became friends with her. And so I started talking to him and that's when I realized his career existed and I right. loved scary movies and I loved all my art classes and I was like, well, that's like both of them combined. So that's what I want to do. And it ended up being Chris Swift. Oh, really? Ah. <laughs> okay. So Chris I Swift, forgot if, that story. whoever you can look him up. I mean, he's a Stan Winston lifer. He's he yeah. was with Stan for a long time before he passed, and now of course at Legacy Effects. Yeah. So, so when I finally started at Stan's, I saw him, and I was like, I knew he wouldn't know who I was. And so people at the shop were like, "Don't tell him! Don't tell him that you that's how you got into this because of him." His head's so <laughs> We love you, Swifty. Yeah. I'm sure he's watching. No, he's not. No. Well, what about you? What brought you on? 
Oh, let's were you see. were you here? Well, you're not in LA, but you're uh, California. I wasn't in right? LA. I was in um, Glendora. Glendora. San Bernardino, then Glendora. Okay. Um, I, you know, in the '80s, loved horror films, even though they scared the heck out of me. But my biggest draw was Henson stuff. Right. That's I was a Henson kid. Um, Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, right. um, Muppet Show. And I remember when I was really little, my dad took me to see, supposedly it was one of the guys who had performed in the Sweetum suit. Okay. And I can totally remember being a little kid. My favorite Muppet, nine. by the way. I know. And I got to meet him. I got to work at Henson's one time, and, or a couple of times, and met Sweetums. And it's one of my favorite pictures of all time. <laughs> Just holding him and a little stinky, but, <laughs> but he was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Henson stuff. And um, that's what introduced me to, like, So you like horror films and Jim Henson? Yeah. There you go. One of those weirdos. <laughs> the, the, best, the best of both the word. Muppets and bloody gory yes. stuff. <laughs> there's, there's a big Venn diagram overlap of puppets and scary stuff, I've noticed. Like, so yeah. many people, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My biggest thing was, in The Dark Crystal, everything was moving on camera. Right. Like, and so all those little things in the background, like the little eyes and the little moss wobbling. And right. I mean, all even that plants stuff. Were yeah. just things would, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. I was like, somebody has to make that. Yeah. And I also um, spent a lot, a lot of time with my grandmothers, uh, both of whom were very crafty, and my mom was crafty. So we were always making stuff. And, right. Um, my one gra- grandmother would take me to the fabric store and get those funny little pillows it was just you know one side is strawberry shortcake and the other side is the back side of strawberry shortcake and then give me a needle and thread yep. and have me sew them together and um recently i was going through some my parents stuff and found uh a space scape that i had made my brother as a birthday gift when really? he was little yeah and it's like a moonscape and it, you know <laughs> you you opened up the back and you stuff stuffing in it and then you stitched around it so it was like a trapunto relief okay, cool. and um i think he might still have that somewhere but i think it's he funny better. yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> so those are the kinds of things i did when i was little and then being a huge um dark crystal fan that um you know got me into exploring you know and seeing what was out there um, right. for this kind of stuff and then i went to makeup school which one <laughs> it was called at the time it was called studio seven fashion career college it was it was never heard of that uh, yeah there was it was in LA no it was in Covina Covina <laughs> so, well, so yeah. LA area LA area, LA area. Yeah. Yeah. and it was like a six month course and um and they promised like lifetime placement after you graduated of course they and, promised that yeah, oh yeah <laughs> and it was either like the makeup uh, counter, you know, at Macy's or right. Sears or whatever, or doing mortuary makeup, and I wasn't into that. Life, <laughs> lifetime career lifetime makeup, placement. doing dead people. There's yeah, a real no. <laughs> and then oddly enough, uh, so we finished the course and went. How long was the course? It's like six months, oh, okay. and there was one other girl that started when I did, so she was on the same track as me. And the day we did our final, we went to go pick up our um, certificate, and there was a big like. The place was locked up. And there was like a sign on the door they had been shut down. Oh, no. <laughs> they embezzled it. <laughs> so, they embezzled your money right yes. out of your pocket. <laughs> so we oh, got no. nothing. I got nothing to show for it. So there was null and void that lifetime uh, yeah. promise of employment. <laughs> but the one piece of advice they gave us that was really good was to build up your portfolio was to go right. flyer at USC or UCLA film schools okay. and do, um, you know, student projects and and get right. practice and get stuff that way so I did that and I met um, an actor named Arturo Gill okay. doing um, turning him into a Christmas self for a, a, a student film a final project and we became friends and he told me that he did suit work and so he took me to John Beekler's one day for an I didn't think it was an interview I thought it was just going to be shown around and so right. I brought my makeup school portfolio with my you know <laughs> Martitions whack noses and you know all that kind of crappy stuff and uh, met Beekler and he um, didn't like my portfolio and he <laughs> told me <laughs> and I I told him what I thought about that <laughs> and stood up come on Art let's go you know <laughs> and Beekler was like wait 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 you know you got a lot of gumption 
yeah. sit down. And I, I was like, well, yeah, I've got a lot of gumption. You just told me that, it, you know. Right. He was seeing it as an interview, and I wasn't. So I was in a totally different frame of mind. And, right. Um, but give me a job (laughs) so we you know we parted there's more of the story but we parted ways and then um at the time i was working at a toy store you know um just living life and uh i left the toy store and didn't know what i was going to do and then i called up Beekler, I found his card like the next Monday. I had forgotten how to say his name, like a horrible person. John Boochler. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I called him and said, I'm going to speak to John, Mr. Boochler, please. <laughs> I wonder if I answered like, the phone. <laughs> it was probably Deke. MMI, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, um, I'm out of retail. Are you ready to hire me? Which is so funny because anybody that knows me, that's not how I talk to anybody. Right. You know, yeah. but that's exactly what I said. And he's like, great, can you start Monday? And I was like, well. You're like, that worked? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was the weirdest thing. So, yeah, I showed up Monday, um, met you. Yeah. And you started teaching me stuff. I still remember one of the first things you said to me. Because I had so much more experience than you. I had been I know that. at least two years before you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything. No, I don't know what, at that point. I think I honestly I'd been around probably four or five. I'm gonna guess. Yeah. Because I, I had already been to K and B. Uh, so I had done, you know, a decent stint at Beekler's and then Alchemy Effects. Right. And I'd done about a year at K and B, and I got laid off for a hot second, and then I went over to John's to help with a uh, Carnosaur right. Two. Yes, Carnosaur yeah. Two. And so I met you the first really. day. Then the next day, a guy named Scott Woodard walked in to do mechanics. Mm-hmm. And 26 years later, he and I are still married. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> yeah. He, uh, yeah. And we heard you talking about MMI earlier. We were watching the live stream and and bringing up Carnosaur 2. And he's right. like, oh, Carnosaur 2. I didn't know at the time, but, you know, that was... He'd been in the industry for a little bit doing mechanics, and Beekler told him that he had $1,000 to do the Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds about right. It's like you can you can rob anything in the shop, like right. you know, cannibalized parts, and but you got a thousand bucks, and then you know, eye blinks, head tilt, side to side, mouth yeah. open, blah blah oh blah. My gosh. I think it was a lot of like cable control type <laughs> yeah. stuff. And you I had remember, like bike. I had worked with um, the mechanic uh, Jeff Edwards <laughs> mm-hmm. over at K and B because yeah, I had definitely been at K and B, and Jeff had already built the dinosaur for Jurassic Park, and he had worked on Raptors. Uh, and I said, I gotta go over to Beekler's and build a rafter. How'd you do the mechanics for that? Because I have no <laughs> idea. Where, and he drew out the whole parallelogram, yeah. like how to do it oh, and stuff wow. like that. And I remember sharing it with Scott, going, "The guy who built the raptors for Jurassic gave me this," and he was like, "That's cool." Like, <laughs> I, and, you know, he tried to reproduce it as best as he could. But yeah, I mean, that was like did. one of his first mechanical jobs. Yeah, he had been working at Alterian, and then so when things were finished for him at, you know, we went to set and did all that craziness on Carnosaur and then he went back to Alterian and then I went back to be, be MMI and you were gone so it was different I ran as quick as I could <laughs> you should have taken me with me <laughs> <laughs> you ended up coming because <laughs> I went back to K&B yes and then you probably weren't that I far behind that's right but you weren't far behind <laughs> no um, so uh, after the tent, uh, tent what was that show what did you work on at John's Metal after? Beast Metal right. Beast I was supposed to hang around for that and I remember Greg Nicotero calling me and saying, if you stay there for one more day, <laughs> you have got to get back here. And I was like, okay. That's right. uh, <laughs> so Metal Beast was starting up, and I Metal think Beast. I designed Metal Beast. It was fun. Done some drawings like that, and I told John Foster and John Beekler, it's like, I'm out, i got to get back to k and Greg Nicotero's really mad. And was, okay, well, mm-hmm. if you got to. And it's like, I've got to go. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm not doing this again. Oh, yeah, the, the tone definitely changed after you were gone. There was yeah. a different set of people in there. And that's another story for another time. And I just love to <laughs> laugh all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. But then, so you jumped in and like super low budget, mm-hmm. all this stuff, and you got to jump in on yeah, essentially I'm Bicentennial Man. Yeah. Start up at Steve's on Bicentennial. I was really lucky. And we went straight into Monkey Bone and, mm-hmm. you know, that. were you on Monkey Bone? I was that? not on Monkey Bone, but I was on... Um, what else was going on at that time? I feel like... They, those two kind of... Because I was brought in essentially from Monkey Bone, and they were still building Bicentennial Man, yeah. but then Monkey Bone kind of shoved to the side a little bit because they were still working okay. on designs or whatever, and I ended up doing... Was it The Village? No, no, no. That was way after that. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think I was just Bicentennial Man th- then, and then... 
Welcome to old people sitting yes. around trying to think <laughs> what they did and I when they did it. I think too much with. I think <laughs> might have been my next job. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you might have gone over because that would have been JP three probably. Yeah. Somewhere about there. So I think that's yeah. where I went next. Yeah. And I went to Alterian after. After John's. John's after John Beekler shop. Yeah, and I met up with Lynette Johnson and learned a lot of stuff from her. I was kind of her shadow for the next like eight years. Right. And worked at. Um, Tank Girl was my first Stan thing. Stan Winston Nope. Oh, uh, right. That's where I met the guys at Stan's, but Lynette and I did that for Alterian. Okay. And we went to set with the suits, and that was the first time that I met Alan and okay. Shane, and I think Smithson was there, um, and Stan. Right. So then when I did end up at Stan's, as a totally new person you know, to that crew, uh, Stan came up into the fabrication room and already knew who I was and gave me a big old handshake and everything. And I remember the lips on the girls' faces were like, <laughs> who are you? Know him. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like we we all landed in, and I oddly landed in the fabrication department. And for the longest yeah. time, it, it was it was weird. I, I can tell that later. But I mean, it's just like, was that something you guys just kind of gravitated to, it, or mine, was it, it you just fell into for me it? Or, too. So what did you start doing? You got hired to well, do what? Well, I got hired for fabrication, but I um, had a a mentor that taught me everything. He made me make molds, he made me sculpt, he made me paint, everything. And least amount we did was fabrication. And that was where though? And that was in Northern California. Okay. So, so somebody was making you, it's like, no, 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 you're gonna learn how to do this and learn how to do that, which is yeah. the best. We keep saying this all night long. It's like, yeah. fill up your basket with all of these different skills, you know, sculpting, mm -hmm. painting, mold making, whether you're good at it or not, because at yeah. some point or another, you're either gonna get laid off or yeah. you're going to go tamp fiberglass on a mold. Yeah, and I've done that. And that, you know, you know it's like if you want to keep working, if you want to keep yeah. eating and staying in Los Angeles working in film, you, you're just going to do everything. Yes, yeah, so in the beginning I didn't know what department, because I remember Christian going, well, what department would you want to start out in? I was like, I don't know. Like, I go, like doing live cast, maybe the mold shop. Right. And that's what I was thinking. I didn't even really know about fabrication. And I had been a model maker for Fry's Electronics. So we did okay. all the interior of their stores and oh, stuff yeah. like that. And so when I got hired on Bicentennial Man, Lenny looked at my portfolio and everything and my, my resume <laughs> and said, you know, put me in the model shop. So right. it was basically fabrication. It was like this mixture of but model were, shop and fabrication. You were downstairs. Mm -hmm. Steve's, Steve's an interesting shop. He had two big mezzanines. Yeah. And so I was like hired for fabrication. It was foam stuff. Yeah. And so I went upstairs into the fabrication mezzanine, which was like... That was real fabrication. Foam, foam fabrication and fabric fabrication, stuff like that. Yeah. And then so, I mean, like, you, you hear fabrication, there's different things. Some people think, like, metal fabrication. Because I was like vacuum forming fabrication. plastic all day, so, yeah. and I was putting plastic pieces together. So then they were calling it fabrication, even though it wasn't 100% fabrication. It's more model So shop. then when yeah. Stans asked me... Oh, what do you do? I go fabrication, yeah. and I ended up in yeah. fabrication. Start sewing. And it's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. <laughs> Luckily, yeah. my mom sewed some stuff as a kid, so at least I could do. So you fake. I could use mm -hmm. a sewing machine, but yeah, I was just like, oh, fabrication. I guess that's what I do. But that's I got hired because I had been a model maker. Well, I said fabrication. You just make it up as you go. Yeah. Make it you make can it. you do that? Yes, I can. Yes. I just fabricated that answer. <laughs> So true. Yeah, it's just you know that's that's what you do. You just make it up. So yeah, yeah. So same with you. Did you trip into fabrication or? Well, oddly enough, so when I worked with you, you taught me how to do a whole bunch of stuff. Remember, we made a five hundred pound head mold for the Raptor. Oh, it was not five hundred pounds. <laughs> yes, it, it was, was eight hundred pounds. pounds. <laughs> yes. Um, ultra cal mold, probably about like this oh big, my God. with an ultra cal core. That thing was. And I. I tried so hard to talk John Beekler into letting us do fiberglass. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's too expensive. And it's like, it's so cheap! <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah. did it what he wanted, Ultra Cal. We've got to run foam in it. We can run foam in it, I promise. I talked to some people. Blah, blah. Yeah. You know, but I was, I was kind of a newbie too, which was funny is that, you know, I was a newbie on that, in the industry. Mm -hmm. But then we had people like you come in that were like, Oh no, I've never worked. Super so it was like you, and I remember the one girl that they hired, and I can't remember her name. She was <laughs> I French, can't either. and pregnant. and and she was very pregnant. And I will never dis, you know, <laughs> discriminate against anybody working. But I had said to those guys, okay, here's what we're gonna have to do. 
this 500 pound mold that we've made, I need somebody to run four skins out of this. So latex rubber, mm -hmm. closing up the molds, strapping the molds, running foam latex into it. We need four of those, five of those, man, ah, whatever. And they it? hired this girl who was very pregnant and you're not supposed to lift heavy stuff. I no. did. I <laughs> lifted everything. I lifted everything. It's like she would brush latex and Ted, could you come over and do it? And then she'd do it. Ted, could you come over? And of course I didn't want her to do it because it's like, you're going to get really hurt really bad. So they kept her on for a while and, you know, we tried to put her into some other lightweight stuff, but it's like, I specifically asked her Non-chemical stuff. Non-chemical-ish oh type stuff. And I don't say they moved her into the front office actually to just help take okay. calls and things like that because yeah. I said she should not be in the shop she's gonna it's gonna be bad you're gonna have a baby <laughs> yeah, she's gonna have a baby in the shop it's gonna be really bad <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, well after after you left um they needed like core covers and stuff sewn for uh, Metal Beast and right. I was the only girl in the shop so I must know how to sew and yeah. I was like <laughs> okay <laughs> so I, I sewed I, I tripped in the fabrication that way too a little bit at John Beekler's because when we were working on demonic toys somebody had come in it was it was the baby doll thing and I had done some patterning and stuff like that when I was a kid at home because my mom sewed mm -hmm. all my my little vests that I wore mm -hmm. when I was a kid and my little whatever this and that blazers and so I taught my or my mom taught me how to sew because I wanted to make puppets I want to make a Kermit puppet oh, I wanted yeah. to do this so I learned how to we're on a machine because I wanted to make puppets. Well, they came in and they, whoever normally sewed for Beekler wasn't <laughs> available. Whoever did their like costume work every now and mm -hmm. again, and they had the worst sewing machine sitting in the corner under a table covered in dust, oh, and boy. I knew how to run a machine. And so they were, how do we do this? It's, it's, this, it's that color fabric, we want this color fabric, it's got to be this much longer. And I finally spoke up, and I shouldn't have. Mm. And because I wanted to be a makeup artist, yeah, I wanted to win oh, an yeah. Academy Award. I wanted to be a makeup artist. I was going to sculpt. I was going to go on set, and that's kind of where my my track was heading. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, is this the costume you actually want?" And he said, "Yeah, this is the baby, and this fits that. It's that, but it has to be that color." I said, "Well, all you have to do is pop the seams on all of this, iron it flat, trace it out. You've got your pattern. Cut out the new fabric, and you put it together." Jeez. And it was like. What? Do you sew? <laughs> I, like, I do now. Yeah. It's like, there's a machine over there. And so yeah. that's what I did. Not, you know, all of a sudden I was, I was a fabricator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So very yeah. quickly. But yeah, and I, I mean, obviously with the foam stuff, mm -hmm. I, you know, that was more of my niche that I knew how to cut foam and yeah. pattern that kind of stuff as opposed to like traditional clothing. But yeah, I knew how to run a sewing machine. I, I don't know. A good friend of ours that was like, I... I can use a sewing machine. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm an expert. <laughs> you know, like a tailor of sorts. It's like, yeah, uh, no, yeah, no, because I'm I can pretty use much. A machine. So much of it is self taught. Yeah. Like, you know, there's people you work with who actually know how to make real patterns right. and do it all correctly. And then My I. My wife, who's standing right over here. But. Who will be on the show mine later? Mine will be wonky, but it will work. <laughs> Yeah, people I mean, ask me a lot if if I can make them clothes, and it scares me to death. Oh, no. I'm like, oh my if you god, need something with six yeah. arms, I'm all about it. Right, you know, and four legs. Yeah, and one time on set, uh, Christine asked me to, can you just watch that person? They had a regular costume on and make sure everything looks right. And I was like, I was freaked out. It was regular clothes. Right. I was like, can I do the crazy weird stuff over here today? <laughs> I'm good with that. Well, it's like this stuff. You know, I'm fine with this all day long because it's mm -hmm. it, you know, you're just putting together a costume, and it's like. It, it doesn't have to look pretty on the outside it looks good but on the in it's like please don't open it up and look on the inside yeah. oh it's yeah horrible. <laughs> oh yeah it's horrible but as long as it looks fine on the outside then that's all you need yeah. so i think the first real outfit that i made was my wedding outfit my wedding oh, wow. dress and of oh, course wow. you always run out of time and so i hot glued the coat together <laughs> and <laughs> barely Shanega came to the wedding and the first thing she did was run up to me and flip the upside of my dress you know oh <laughs> that's <laughs> funny like that's funny <laughs> Yeah, fake it till you make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you guys made it. it. <laughs> yeah. You guys yeah. made it. So, I mean, we worked for quite a long chunk of time. I was at KMB for, I think, about five years. I made it and four years. And you kind of came in maybe midway. My, what, what was your first show there? Oh, man. I, th I want... Oh. And see, oh, I, I worked there, singing? but not with either one of you. You came in, I think, after me. Because mm -hmm. I had me. left... You were there for a short bit with me. 
It was Simeon and Zena. Uh, okay, so I was there for Simeon. I didn't work. You worked at the uh, the annex the other, shop. Yeah, the other shop. So that's probably why I didn't see you all that much. Yeah. And then I left from there, and I did a short little stint at Rick Lazzarini's, and that's when Steve Johnson hired me. Right. Steve was gearing up by Centennial Man. Okay. And Monkey Bone, and uh, called me, and it, very funny. I'll have to tell this story tomorrow when he's here. But um, he was like, "I want you to come in." And I, I sent my resumes out all over the place. And literally, it went in the mail one day, and I got a call from him the second day. I need you in here. And he's like, who's this? <laughs> Steve Johnson. I said, okay, hi, Steve. And he goes, come in here tomorrow for an interview. And I said, I can't. Are you turning me down? I said, not for you know an interview. I said, I just can't come in tomorrow. I'm working for blah, blah, blah. All right, come in the next day. You know, but it was it was one of those weird things. But, <laughs> so that's when I started at Steve's after leaving K and B. Uh huh. But there's a lot more to that story. I'll tell it when Steve's here. <laughs> well, I didn't tune in and, and listen. You tune in because it's it's not horrible, but it's it's no. fun. But um, the shop has their fun stories and their yeah. not so fun stories. No. Yeah, <laughs> they're all fun. And they may not have been fun at the time, but now they're funny. Oh, well, really? I mean, <laughs> Alan funny. pulling the stuff out of the box to show me. It's like, hey, look at these three characters that almost killed you. <laughs> Uh-huh. Remember when you were trapped in this for a day? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. That was horrible, but yeah. now I can laugh about it. <laughs> yes. I mentioned Tanker was my first on-set experience, and the first two weeks of that, every day I would go back to the hotel room and cry. I'd be like, really? what the heck? Yeah, it was just such a torture. Just hours or? All of it. Um, we ended up working out of the back of my truck. We didn't yeah. have a work, oh, work room or anything, and that was I think Jemco was the thing back then before wow. Costco. And I had a four, Toyota 4Runner, and we went and got scoop lights and patio furniture and lined the bed of it. <laughs> we were filming, filming in an old oh copper gosh. mine, and we, we'd have to drive, like, base camp was way at the bottom, and we'd have to drive up through this, you know, bl- like, bleached sand. So if you took corners too fast, like, I almost pitched us into the oh dugout God. ravines. It was crazy. Um yeah, night shoots in the Arizona desert, but yeah, we, it <laughs> it was it was crazy. It was hot. It was it was a lot, but I learned so much on that show, and now I look back on it with fond memories. Have you and I spent but, a lot of time on set, or oddly enough, no? I don't think so. I mean, it just it felt like maybe a couple of times. <coughs> I don't. You know. have been on set with a bunch. Yeah. Because we started out with Kia hamsters. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, we mm-hmm. did the hamsters a lot. I can't remember. Is that the only thing that we went on set with? I mean, prior to that, we I don't think we had been on set together. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe the, the Kia hamsters. Kia I think hamsters. started it, and then we kept being on set with those. So at, at Legacy Effects, Don and I were you on that team at all? Building those no. suits. Mm-mm. So Don and I, and it was probably Amy Wetzel. You know, like it was a mm-hmm. small, tight group. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's I was on that set, that first set, because we had a decent crew that first set. Yeah. But yeah, dressing up the Kia hamsters in basically their um, motion capture suits. Yeah. They had some fabric clothing, like regular wardrobe that they wore, but then the rest of it was blue screen suits, and yeah. went on that for those first, and we went on a those lot of those. Those were fun. Those were tons of those fun. Those were fun. We got to hear a lot of songs replayed <laughs> over oh, and yeah. over, and over this and that, and oh, it was, oh, uh, there was lots remember of... remember that song. Yeah. Yeah, I think my last year... Uh, before I went to Oregon was when that campaign came in because I remember you guys working on, like starting right. it and then yeah I think that ran for years that whole time. Yeah. yeah that ran for years because mm-hmm. I I always say I got to see them they were they were fat fatter got fat and then we did the skinny guys oh yeah mm-hmm. they all got skinny and nobody liked them skinny so they got fat again yeah <laughs> and I think true. we did yeah, one happens. more <laughs> we get one more commercial um, with them we did the the big shoot where. It was all the hamster girls. Oh yeah, you know, the dancers yes. and all that kind of stuff. So yes. we did all that. So Didn't we do the? Um, was that a Kia commercial where all the different characters went on the road trip? That was um, yeah. We did that. We uh, it was sock monkey. Yeah, it was that was a uh, Kia. That. It, yes, it was Kia. But when they were doing the different campaign, yeah, and it was like one of the from Yo Gabba Gabba. Yeah, because that's the, the one robot. I took care of. Yeah. Yeah, and we so went we up to went on that set to get, yes. So we and went straight to there. Mammoth. Yeah. You and I, I think, had one of the more fun days, though, because oh, yeah. Amy had to stay up with a couple other characters. Amy Wetzel, who we work with as well, she had to stay up with one of the other characters, and they chose Don and I to go... With the skydivers. The skydivers. Um, right and we wanted alley. so hard. <laughs> we like, wanted we to go, go up there. Can we go? 
Because no. like, we should we should put the heads on them at the last minute. Oh, yeah. We should do this. And it was like, no, you guys. We can jump do. out with them too if you need us. Yeah, if you want to jump out, we'll jump out. It's like. Dawn is a great one to go on set with, especially when there's crazy stuff like that. She's I like, love it. So yeah, I mean, I don't know what they went up to, like five thousand feet or whatever it was for jumping, and yeah, they had to carry. So it was kind of fun. Is that we got them dressed up? Yeah. And I made like a special suit because you of made a special head the bear. for. And a well, special head for that for red the character. Muno. Yeah, whatever. And because uh, that they had was to take their heads off partway through coming down so that they could see to land. Right. So then we'd have to find the heads on the ground <laughs> later on. Well, that was the big one. Is that they were supposed <laughs> oh. to clip to them. Yes. So they could, after they, they shot what they were supposed to shoot, and then they could pop the heads off, and then they were tethered to their yes. chest. But the one time, they forgot the tether. Oh, and that's what happened. Head. Head and they off. jumped out, and I guess the person, they said they, they knew what had happened, and they were trying to hold, but the head just went, <laughs> yeah. out, and then so, of course, it wrecked the take. Oh. And <laughs> I, remember, really wreck I remember the pilot coming down. I don't know if you remember this. The pilot came down, and he got into a golf cart with another dude. Yes, I remember them like, going in the golf this cart. This is never going to get found. It's like, we're yeah. done. We're done but for the But the pilot's like, I saw where it fell. But this, well, <laughs> the, the thing I love, he goes, well, we were at about 6,000 feet, and we were going this fast, and it just kind of triangulated where it would be, and it should be right over, and it, <laughs> That's uh, right. And boom. Like, and they come back, and it's like, like, oh, damn, we got to keep shooting. <laughs> we're not wrapped. Great wrap. story. But then we drove all the way back to L.A. And we had to day, stop and do the pool we, party. We stopped and did the pool party thing, and then we stopped and did just hitchhiking along the road. Yeah, it was a cool day of shooting, because you'd shoot, you'd drive, you'd shoot, you'd drive. Yeah. It was the fastest... Feel, like it took the longest yeah. to get to Mammoth, but it felt the fastest I've ever driven to Mammoth. Right, well, back because I was entertained. Yeah, because then we shot that night at a, yeah. a country western bar oh, in right. Chatsworth or Northridge, yeah. Chatsworth, something like that. But then Dawn, she was on me with another costume that almost killed me. Yeah, I forgot what it was. Tyson, uh, Foster Farms. Foster Farms corn dog. Yes, <laughs> and I think I've got pictures on my Instagram of that costume. Yeah, because we had you, and then we had Chris. Christoph, Christoph, yeah, because he played the smaller version because it got right. angry and it got big. Yeah, bigger it was and bigger. angry. Yeah. Well, it was hangry. It got oh. hangry. Big. Hangry. Uh -huh. And so tender. Which somebody a big gets hangry if I remember right. Hmm. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get hangry. <laughs> you start working a late night, all of a sudden it's like you don't know what I just need craft service a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah, good. Right. No. But. No. So we, you dressed me up in that suit. Yes. And you were the only tech on set. Yes. So we we teched. Kind of the both of us teched for Kristoff. Yes. A little bit because so he was in the suit and we could both kind of tag team him. Yeah. But then you had to do just me. Yes. And then you tell it. You were. We had to do a driving scene and he was going to be in the back seat in his big creature furry. It's hot anyway. Yeah. In that thing. So we get in the car. They say we're going to have AC, but someone left. The, you said the battery died or something. I think, I think they left the lights on, the, the battery died Yeah, the they thought there was a way they could make it work so they could use the air conditioning and then nah. still couldn't. Why not? And then they also couldn't put the windows down for the shot. So the windows are up. Tez, I'm laying in the very back of the, the SUV and I had a tank top and shorts on and I was dripping sweat. <laughs> and so Ted was in a furry costume in the back seat all hunched over and right. I don't know how he made it. And just trying to menace this kid. They want me. It's like, uh -huh. do this, do that, and it's it was a minivan, wasn't it? Like yeah. a minivan oh, maybe type thing. It was. But I'm I'm standing, trying to stand, and I, I think I was kind of sitting on my one foot, yeah. and that my whole leg was cramping up. That was horrible. But then I was like, move this. It's like I remember at one point, it's like I can't effing move. <laughs> it's like I can't move anywhere. I'm jammed in a car. You yeah. know, the head was like this big, and, and I was puppeteering from behind so I couldn't see what I was well, it's puppeteering the, it's it just was the just the mouth, like I the think. mouth moving the so mouth like, moving and I think I was so jammed up that the mouth was just like <laughs> <laughs> like that yeah. Dawn's back there just <laughs> I did get sleepy back there because yeah. it was so hot I, 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 I got <laughs> so worst. so sick in there I, I got oh yeah he had to take that thing off I had fast. to take it off immediately but luckily I mean they we, we rode circles in Griffith Park mm -hmm. just no let's just keep shooting let's keep shooting it's like the mom and the kid are fine. Yeah. You know, Dawn's got her shorts and tank top on. What about the guy wearing like 90 pillows and a fursuit? <laughs> it's just like, 
Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, and we keep circling and circling. Thank God I don't get car sick because I was laying down in the back. But neither do I. You but don't I either. could I could see where I was. So I mean, it's just it's just constant <laughs> movement like this, and I'm basically in like a giant fishbowl that's dark <laughs> and then i mean the only way to get air or to see anything is open the mouth up mm-hmm. and i'm you know dawn's <laughs> trying to like open the mouth <laughs> and I, I just hear the servos going because <laughs> <laughs> i'm like mashed up against him it's like Dawn, open the mouth open the mouth i'm trying to open the mouth <laughs> don't like, wake up open the mouth <laughs> i'm awake <laughs> well that's now funny. you guys off you know you you you're still a legacy right yes yeah. so you guys are back to work Yes. yes. We can't say what you're back to work on. No, but we've done a we couple did, of projects we, in the last few months. Yeah. Yeah. A few other projects mm-hmm. than the one that you're working on right now? Yes. Are you guys back on set? No. Okay. No, but Soonish. Soonish. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Okay. We're supposed to be. <laughs> but you did both get to work on, and I talked about like this with Alan, is that we all got to work on Mandalorian. Woo-hoo, yes. yes. Mandalorian. Yeah, that first season. And you guys worked on second season. We did. Mm-hmm. Like that. So we all seen the trailer for Mandalorian. Do you want to know what's going to happen? I don't know. We don't know. I wasn't on second season. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they were, but there's a Disney executive standing behind the camera right now <laughs> with a loaded rifle pointed at both of them. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, no, yeah. so you guys got to be on. You were on set, though. Yeah. Season yes. one. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. I, I was mean, on it set was for a day. In a room. <laughs> I remember that, yes. Where we tried a couple of costumes on. We put the Mandalorian costume on. What's his name? Who was doing the stunt? A lot of stunt Lati- work. Oh, Lati- Nope. Who's the... Uh, Brandon? Brendan. Oh, Brendan. Brendan. Yeah, He's, so we got to dress him up one day. He suit, yeah. Yeah, that first season he was wearing the suit a lot. So we, we dressed him up, I think, just for photographs or something like that, that day. Because we were, uh, I was in there trying to figure out the holster. Because there was a whole holster that I remember you that were figuring working. that out. Um, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. And, uh, what's his name? Oh. Oh. The guy with the thing. You know the guy. And then somebody else is down there helping. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some well, Mike. Mike. Well, no, yeah. the, the uh, other guy that was in fabrication that helped make the undersuits. I can't remember his name. James. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. James DeWitt. Sorry, James. Yeah. Our first time working with him. Yeah. yeah. No. He was really good though. But yeah, so, so our, I was. Our defense. We we work got, downstairs and they work upstairs. I got so. I got a little tour. Mike Manzel took me around and said, uh, "That's the cantina over there." <laughs> and this is the volume over here. And I was like, that's really cool. Yeah, and someone said, you're not cool. supposed to be on this set. And I was like, no, stop. Yeah, no, busted. Oh, for <laughs> real? Oh. Yeah, I got kind of kicked off the set. But I had oh. my tag on and everything. And they said, you got the wrong tag on. I was like, oh. I got so, But I mean, I mean, I don't know what Star Wars meant to you guys. You know, growing up as kids and all that kind of stuff. Because we're all close to the same age. I just figured I'd never work on a Star Wars anything. Because they all shoot in London. And they right. build everything in London. So I just figured it would never happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, and then I know on set we always, like, it's, it's long hours. It's the first yeah. AD's yelling at you. You're trying yeah. to figure out how to puppeteer this or how to get this costume on and fix this thing. Once you guys are removed from season one, at least, you know, is it something you can look back at and just go, holy crap, that was Star Wars? Yeah. I mean, was, oh, totally. definitely. Even, even, while, even there was one yeah. day I walked into the volume because it's, you know... It's this whole screen that wraps all the way around the stage with LED lights, and you and feel like top, you're the there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was a space scene. It was just stars everywhere, and it was the Razor Crest, and it looked like the back end of it looked like it was really there. And I, that day, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, look at this. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, Absolutely it was, amazing. It was fun to just step on set that one, yeah. that one day. And it was like, he's going to come yeah. back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was... It was hard work. There was it one was. day I checked my steps or whatever, and I was just working on two stages, but going back and forth between two sure. sets, and I did like 12 miles that yeah. day. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the uh, first season, Don and I handled all the background creatures, okay. uh, a lot of the Lucasfilm assets that they sent okay. back. And so, um, you know, the team would be puppeteering baby or or of not whatever was going on and don and i would be hustling you know oh yeah. we've got all the jaw was we've got we'd have all the background guys no, but then we would have you stunt. guys got some on screen time didn't you well we also had we the did. stunt mando and the yeah. stand in mandos yeah yes yes don and i got to be jawas Yay! <laughs> yes <laughs> now the only reason we got to be jawas no wait a minute stand up a second <laughs> how, how tall are we all? 
<laughs> I mean, I'm only 5'10". You guys are going to be about 5'5". Five, five, yeah. I'm 5'6". And our jaw was about here? There. They were, they were desperate size. because <laughs> they were doing a reshoot. It was the very last day of shooting. Okay. They just didn't bring enough of our Jawas in. Yeah. And they were like, we need five more Jawas. And they start going, Don, could you be a Jawa? <laughs> you didn't. Finally, Tim was like, I want to be a Jawa. I just kind of forced myself in there. So, so then, were you just, did you have to squat down? Or we were on our or? knees. Okay. Hiding behind junk. Yeah. Okay. Like so, we would be positioned more behind things, but then we'd be on our knees, and then we'd sit down real low on our knees because they were sitting and standing. Right. So then, when they would stand, we'd get up on high on our knees. Oh, okay. And then we would have to cheer stuff with our arms up. And the first time, we all forgot our arms are way longer right. so we looked like these weird monkey arms <laughs> going, and so then we all had to go oh yeah we got to do like this kind of thing we were Very trying cool. to match the yeah. shot that they kind of already done so yeah so i know there's not a lot of time left but there was a question for um scott is asking what do they think about the child aka baby yoda becoming so popular with star wars fans Oh, oh, geez. We, I <laughs> knew people were going to love it, but I did not know it was going to go viral Explode. like that and yes. go crazy. Same. I just thought, first time I saw it working, and I was just like, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. I was in real life, and it was actually. Which cute. Yoda do you like best? Older Yoda or younger Yoda? I like them <laughs> both the same. Don's always very pragmatic that way. Does <laughs> 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 the woman with the child tattoo? Yeah, he's like, yes, I want to see the child <laughs> necklace yeah, child I see necklace. right here. I, I uh -huh. joke and but say I do the only like child original. I'm going to have to. I do too, you know, because he's iconic. I mean, it, it's almost, the it's the thing too, it's like, it, it's, yeah, it's not that I dislike, you know, the child or the baby or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, but I mean, to me, this is why I'm here. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. not yeah. the, you know, but you know, yeah. the, the Frank Oz puppeteered mm -hmm. Stuart Freeborn, you know, built it and yeah, yeah. I think as a kid, like Yoda was one of my favorites, mm -hmm. Chewbacca was one of my favorites, yeah. probably because he was like an animal, you know, yeah. and then and of course like Princess Leia, yeah, definitely, she was, you know, the girl. Right. The thing that the success of the child is amazing, but it's it's a little bittersweet in a, in a sense because we had to keep it such a secret right. that there was like this inherent fear. You sure. know, you couldn't talk about it. You couldn't, men you know, like, nothing. Right. And yeah. then, even after the world saw it, people, I feel, can, still can, felt like I couldn't talk about can, it. Oh, I know. We're, we're sitting here yeah. talking about it now. It's like, can we talk know, about season yeah. one? It's oh, like, oh, wait, that was last year. I think yeah. we can talk about season oh, one. Oh, I know. You know Rosebud is the sled, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's that type of thing. It's like. Yeah. So that, that part is really hard. Um, but, yeah, and then wondering, too, like, you know, Star Wars fans love their Star Wars and they love right. it a certain way right. and what happens if we introduce this character and they hate it right yeah, it's gonna know, go like, one way whoa, or the other. Like, hey I just uh -oh. I just working on the show <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it and it is interesting because we make so much stuff we right. we we are so lucky to, to do what we do and be right. parts of the things that we're part of yeah uh, but for some reason the child just really touched people in a different right. way like yeah I remember when we did the first Iron Man I uh, was on set with the first time that we got to get him fully dressed in the in the oh my gosh I'm gonna lose street cred here but the red one was Mark three the Mark the Mark three uh, three Mark three Mark three, Mark three. <laughs> okay <laughs> I still got it <laughs> the red and gold version um, we were on set and we had to bury him rebel and he climbs out of this hole and it was the first time we got to light his eyes up and meet uh, Trevor myself. And the head of VFX were all standing in a line. And when we turned the lights on, everybody was just like, oh. And we got a little, like, teary. And I look right. over at Trevor, and he's, like, a little teary. <laughs> and the VFX guy is like, oh. And he just looks at this, and he goes, that is so cinematic. Yeah. And that was one of the first times we was like, wow, this is this is really, really cool. Yeah. And then, then you see Iron Man stuff everywhere, and you're like, hey, yeah, yeah. The baby... Just blows that out of the water yeah. for some reason. It's I felt like that when I worked on Monkey Bone. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, you work on some things. I was working, when I was working on AI, that was my first set to go to. Yeah. Ah. And I was like, That's a hell of a oh, set. this is going to be amazing. I was just like, and, you know, it didn't quite go over as well as you thought it was going to. I remember <laughs> when, when the buzz came out for that film, everyone was like, don't ruin the surprise. Don't ruin the surprise. Because it didn't come on the heels of... Um, 
what was that other um ai you mean yeah there was some previous film had come yeah. out and it was like don't ruin this ride right so that was like the new catchphrase so the whole time when i'm in theater watching it i'm like what's the surprise what's the surprise <laughs> and then i see <laughs> alan scott walk through a scene with something and I'm oh like, yeah is that the surprise is that the surprise <laughs> <laughs> my boss is watching what? with <laughs> teddy with teddy with teddy yeah. through. oh okay what's yeah because they couldn't just let an extra carry it through. Oh, right, right. yeah. Because this major puppet it that couldn't be, break. Right. Yeah. We're not going to let an extra carry the million dollar prop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like anytime they, you know, with Baby Yoda, when people have to hold it, you can just see some of the puppeteers like, Ooh, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody yeah. ever do the, ah, not kidding. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I think they were too scared to. Sure. No, I, I will... You know, so we shot season two, and everybody's seen the trailer. The baby is, you know, in the trailer. Right. Um, what happens to the baby in season two? No, I we cannot. Know. <laughs> I don't know. But there was a day that um, my job, mostly for the day, was to hand the baby to one um, one of the actors in the in the Mando suit, and um, you know, it's it's baby sized. Right. And you can't. You do help. catch yourself you can't carry a baby. Yeah. You can't help. <laughs> Part of it, and I was getting a lot of, like, people were coming up saying, you know you're rocking the baby. Part of it was, it is a little hefty, you know. It's right. So you and everything. So you got to, you know, keep something going. You your arms going to fall asleep. Right. You know, it but is you weird, can't. though. It does make you, like, start doing It's weird. Yeah. And that's not like I have kids or anything. No, I don't have kids. But the maternal instincts <laughs> just start coming in. It's like, yeah. yeah. You're like, you're so cute. <laughs> before, before we even finish the puppet, um, they needed something at the shop to take to meetings and try to figure out, you know, uh, how do we bring this thing to life and right. what size is it really going to be you know how big are the ears and at the the early time it was um you know make this make this coat like costumey thing um but we're probably gonna have to hide the ears and hide him a lot so that's why he has this massive collar you know so that he could hide under these ears so i made a stuffed animal version with a velcro face and i still have the head on my desk which is really funny i've got the head and then i've got a baby yoda Bluetooth speaker, so it's like we started here and now we're <laughs> here. <laughs> the placement, I'm like we're, we're full circle. That's and, funny. Um, not getting any money for that, <laughs> but um, but so I made this thing and I was calling it Yermit because it wasn't Yoda, it was either Noda or Yermit because it wasn't Yoda or Kermit. Right. So that came Yermit and it wasn't you know Noda because it's not Yoda. And it's not it's Yoda. Not, yeah. So it was this green little thing. And I basically needed an armature to build the coat off of. And the coat was just a, a pitch to, for the guys to take to a meeting right. with Favreau and everybody. Um, and it had a Velcro face so that we had different size uh, of the concept artwork with ears oh, pinched. Sure. And so they could decide how big they wanted the ears to be. Mm -hmm. And literally Velcroed those on. And so I passed off this armature stuffed animal thingy right. um, and built that coat around it. And then... They came back from the meeting and were like, "That's it, make that." Like, wait, what? You know, and so I had like three or four days, make the like coat. three or four days to make it before this meeting. You know, just to get Did you something do one in of their these? hands. And done. What else did? Just made it. <laughs> then we, you know, we had some alterations to do. You know, because since it was going to be a puppet, you know, just to right. make it more malleable and and work. Um, and I did, you know, really frenetic stitching all over it and tried right. to give it some details. And then it was time to duplicate it. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't know that was going to be the <laughs> oh, deal. Yeah, look more. More. <laughs> well, normally when you make something, you're like, here's how I did this, and here's my pattern. Right. Here's and then, oh, I never you know, did that. <laughs> here's my crappy patterns. <laughs> oh, we know, Ted. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think I've taken your spot now. That's called job security. <laughs> make crappy patterns, no, hand them off to somebody else that can't decipher them whatsoever. <laughs> No, I had, I had spent so much time up at Leica where making all these little, um, you know, clothes for all their stuff, and you practically have to make a Bible. You have to, we right. had to count stitches, you know, and stitch length had sure. to be the same because, you know, like. Going from shot know, to shot, and, yeah, you know, like it's got to be continuity. Norm, par Paranorman on Norman's collar, he had like nine stitches. So there was meticulous notes taken. So then cut to the baby where it's just been like. Right. You know, I mean, thought went into it and everything, but then having to, like. I hate this word, but reverse engineer it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, duplicate it so that, um, you know, the, the other few that we have look exactly the same. Right. Granted, you can't tell. I mean, but. Yeah. Hopefully you can. If it, yeah. 
But if you could noticed. tell, there was a <laughs> somebody will notice. Somebody will notice. Somebody's going to scrutinize and go. I noticed the sleeve length on uh, Yoda in scene two is different than. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, people are already saying from the trailer, like, um, "Yeah, I wonder if they aged him and blah blah blah." blah. And you know, I can't say if we did or we didn't, but right. you know, it's just I, funny I was, what people notice. I wanted to say this with Alan earlier on. It was so funny, even before the first season came out, and all the cosplay people. Mm-hmm. There's that first picture oh yeah people were out. making costumes they were from already that. making costumes and the little greebles that he had and well you know why they've got that on the bandoliers because blah 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 this and that and i'm like i'm the guy that stuck those in there and i just thought you don't want them in a row you put one here and you <laughs> skip two and you put it here and i'm gonna put two here and like that and it's like well i know what that greeble is it's the thing from the this and it's like no it's not the guys just made that on the lathe downstairs i wanted to go on so many of these forums and go nope you're wrong <laughs> nope you're wrong it's like i couldn't say a thing now it if just, it was favreau he would have he would have known that and been like yes this is for this this is for this and tell us to do it but uh-huh. right they didn't it, I mean, it's, Me it's fun. I mean, even Alona will say, you know, when she was working on the show and, and making yeah. up some of the costume pieces, too, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, some of the fans are so, like you said, they're, they're, they, they love everything. their Star Wars, and they know it forwards and backwards. But so, many, so much of what we did, even, like, on the original, it's like, this might look good right here, and you, you <laughs> put that on there. And it's like, yeah. and then somebody goes, yeah, that does look good there. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, but then people will make up a story for it. You know, it's like, well, I know why that's there. And it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know that's there because I only had seven of those, and I had to put seven there, and then I had to ask the guy to make two more, and I put them on the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's stuff like that. But it's, I mean, what's fun about that is you get to put your little two yeah. cents in. You know, yeah. and, and either somebody likes it or they dislike it. And, that's you know, true, yeah. And then we, you know, then it becomes legend. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, we're really happy with how the baby's been received, obviously. Yeah. No, it's tons yeah, of fun. Yeah, super fun. So you might be working on another season of something. Yeah. Someday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Getting back to work. It is nice to be back to work, though, after this pandemic. Yeah. Or while the pandemic is going right. on, we're super lucky. Yeah. And it's, you know, I've yeah. been talking to so many different makeup artists and onset people and all the different precautions and... Yeah. You know, we're doing our precautions here. Yes, we, we did. Mask. We did a Got tape measure. We did tape measures <laughs> like how, how far apart we can be and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So this is great that you've been able to. It's been a lot of fun. Making things. Yeah. No. And I just. Them. I mean, what am I going to do? We got to work on some some projects this last year too. I mean, we've done in three. I know. I can't wait till you can talk about three it. Films. I know. I know. You're really asked about what we can't talk about. What have you been doing? I can. This is what I was given <laughs> permission to say. No, actually, I worked on a really great um, film with a, a director, uh, Ben McPherson. Um, we got hired to, to build some really fantastic costumes, which I, I don't know if we can actually show them yet, mm. but um, we did some really neat kind of like space suity type That's cool. costumes. We did those. And then I can space say, <laughs> what's that? Space suits, yeah. <laughs> no, I can, I can say that those we, look really good though. several I've weeks ago, it. we did like a, it was about a four week project. Oh, those space suits, yeah. Away, but it was a it was a two week build um, for a, a secret Neil Blomkamp project. Ooh. Try that again. How do you say that? Secret no, no. Neil Blomkamp. Okay. What did I say? No, did you I just had something? to concentrate to say it. Right? <laughs> Neil, so yeah. I don't want to slur my words. I've been drinking so much off camera. <laughs> no, but that's all I can say. Mm-hmm. We got to work on this really great project. That's and awesome. And um, that was that was a real highlight because we we got that kind of set in front of us and it's like yes I want to work with him That's of course really I want to cool. work with him <laughs> so you know we did that out of our little shop here and That's so cool. Yeah. I know. So I successfully been. propagated an Animal Crossing island. That's about all I accomplished during That's the right. pandemic. <laughs> you can talk to Mackenzie right over there. You can talk Get to my daughter about code. that. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you both so much for coming well, in. Thanks for thank having you. Us. Sharing your history, our history. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's fun to see you guys. We haven't seen you in a while. It's great to have you by the booth. The booth nice is cool. To see your face. It's <laughs> super cool. The booth was fun. There's and those eyes amazing. are amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. They're a lot of fun to build. They really are. So there you have it. All right. Well, we're going to take another break. Uh, come back and keep watching more a little bit later. Thanks.